Father, we just thank you for your presence, that we have breath that comes from you, that you are the breath that we breathe this morning, Lord. And so we enter into your presence right now. We thank you for your presence that's already here. Thank you that you are Jehovah Shema, the ever-present one. And so right now, through and by the precious blood, we enter into all that you've made available to us. We receive it by grace through faith. We come praying for those who have authority over us. We pray for this nation. Come thy kingdom, be done thy will on earth as it is in heaven. Father, this is our receiving day. This is our receiving moment. And so we look to heaven. We look to you. Our focus and our attention is on you, the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega, Lord, the beginning and the end, Lord. We just thank you that you're completing that which you've begun on the inside of us. We declare that it is a finished work right now in Jesus' mighty name. So we just thank you in advance for signs, wonders, miracles, miraculous working power right now that's happening in our presence. And it's in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you in advance for breakthrough. We welcome you to intervene in our affairs. In Jesus' mighty name. And all that agree said amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and we are going to dive right into the Word of God this morning. Um, I want to talk in the minutes that I have on fulfilling the will of God. I realize that this is a topic that I think will really make some things very clear and cause you to understand and apply the Word of God in your life so that you can begin to fulfill His plan, you know, there is a plan for your life that has been mapped out from the foundations of the world. And we want to discover it. We want to walk in it. We want to be able to know that we're in it. We want that assurance. And I believe that we can have that by knowing what the Word of God says about finding, following, and fulfilling the will of God today. And so we're going to um, begin in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to look at the Amplified and the King James Version, and I just trust that the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you because you don't accidentally follow the will of God. It's not like you just kind of bump into it. You have to be intentional and deliberate about pursuing God's will for your life. A lot of times people live their lives and, you know, they wonder why they're not fulfilled. They wonder why they're not in a place of peace and contentment. But in most instances, we can easily follow the status quo of life and just, you know, go to work and go uh, to eat and go back home and go to sleep and do that over and over and over again without being mindful and deliberate about what God's will is for our life. And so this is something that has been very important to me just as a young Christian. I always was in pursuit of wanting to be in the will of God and cognizant of wanting to be in God's will. And so um, I remember I was at another church. I was serving in the children's ministry and uh, just really a babe in the Lord, didn't really know anything about scriptures or anything concerning a relationship with God. And so that was one of the prayers, uh, just a simple prayer, uh, to know his will, to teach me thy will. And, you know, over time and making um, a commitment to that, it's amazing how God will meet you where you are and will begin to speak to you uh, on where to be and where to go and where to serve and who to marry and where to live and all these kinds of things. He wants to speak to us, and so it shouldn't be a mystery where we don't know his will for our life because there are things that we can do to begin to understand it and to find it and to follow it. And so in Ephesians chapter 5, look down at verse 17. Um, I love this in the Amplified because it really helps us to get a hold of this scripture here 
in totality. And so it says, therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish. So he says for us not to be vague concerning this subject, not to be thoughtless, not to um, pay any attention to it. He says, don't be foolish. He says, but understanding. He says, but understanding and firmly grasping. Firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. And so we are not going to accidentally fulfill God's will. I want you to understand that this morning, that you're not going to accidentally fulfill God's will. I'm reminded of Samuel and when he was a young boy and how he had to go to Eli the priest because he recognized that it was God speaking, but he didn't quite know if it was God's will and if it was God speaking to him, but it was Eli who was able to guide him and to direct him and help him to understand God's voice. And so it is in our lives, in many instances, God will cause people to become a part of our lives, give them the authority to speak into our lives so that we can begin to fulfill God's will and we can see the things happen as relates to what he's desiring for us to do. So seeing God's will realized in your life means, first of all, finding out what unique purpose he created you for. There's a unique purpose that he has for your life. You can end up meandering through life, allowing obstacles you encounter to determine what direction you go in. And so a lot of times we can associate circumstances, tests, and trials uh, to be the basis for God's will. But we have to realize that God's will is so much bigger than the hard times and the obstacles, and we cannot just limit them because a lot of times, you know, when things happen, it's not even God's will. It's just life and things that the enemy gets involved in, and the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And so there are things that happen in life that may cause stealing, killing, and destroying. I mean, you know, that's not God's will. And so we've got to understand. We've got to be taught. We've got to know what God's will is. We can't just assume that because something happened, because something took place, because of this obstacle, this must be God's will. Not necessarily. We have to spend time with him. Um, this may be something that we have to uh, recognize that it is God, that he wants to have the authority and have the say-so in our lives. Amen? So God intends for you to experience the satisfaction of a life well lived. A life well lived. He wants you to live well, love well. And when you understand God's will for your life, I'm telling you, child of God, that is a life that is well lived to the full, not in fear, not in lack of clarity, not in confusion, not in, you know, survival mode, but I'm talking about a life that is well lived. And he can show us that. He can reveal that to us as we understand and as we firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. I'm reminded of that word understanding in Ephesians chapter 5. It means to piece together. That word in the Greek understanding that we just looked at in Ephesians 5, it means to piece together pieces as in a jigsaw puzzle. And so, you know, when you put pieces together in a jigsaw puzzle, you don't quite know how it's going to create a picture or how it will create an image. But when you piece them together and you connect them, you begin to see and you begin to understand what God is revealing and he'll begin to show you. And so you may make this decision and, you know, that decision connects with this piece 
and this piece connects with that piece, and then the, that third piece connects with the fourth piece, and then ultimately, you begin to see, wow, this is God's will, and I firmly grasp what it is the Lord is saying. And so it's a process. I'm not saying that this is going to all be revealed from A to Z. And, you know, you're going to know next week the will of God for your life. Uh, but it's the revealing. It's the unfolding. It's the piecing together so that we can begin to firmly grasp. And we're not vague. We're not thoughtless. We're not foolish. But we understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I love this. Because accomplishing the things that you were created to achieve means making a deliberate effort to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. It means making, making a deliberate effort. Somebody say deliberate and so that's why we have to go to God. We can't ask other people. You know, I didn't go to uh, my sister in the Lord and say, what is the will of God for my life? I didn't ask. I thought about it, but I knew that she wouldn't know that in the times in which I was serving in children's ministry and we were in the hallway when we started the church and, you know, the kids were there and we were trying to figure out. But, you know, we have to go to God. We have to go to our creator because how many of you know he is the only one who knows the will of God for our life. And so when we put forth the effort to discover God's purpose for our life, this is a critical turning point in each and every one of our lives. And so he says here in Romans chapter 12, let's look at the message translation Verses 1 and verse 2, I believe that this will help us to begin to discover some things and get a hold and grasp some things. So he says, so here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your every day. He says, God helping us. So it's not us figuring it out on our own because that's a lot of times what we want to do. We want God to bless what we plan out. We want God to go along with our will, with our desires, with our decisions. He says, God will help us. God will lead us. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your every day, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. So everything we do, we place it before God, with God helping us to eat, God helping us to work, God helping us to walk around. How many of you know if it were not for God, we wouldn't be able to do those simple things? How many of you know it takes the, I mean, the blessing of the Lord to be able to do the most meander task? And he says it's God helping us. And so a lot of times we take so many things for granted and we think that we can do it on our own. I'm telling you, once we begin to see what happens without it, I'm telling you, we'll become more grateful. We'll become more thankful. You go and you see where people are having challenges eating and walking around their everyday ordinary life, and you just lift up your hands and you say, Lord, thank you for helping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me strength. Hallelujah. So he says, this is what he wants us to do. That is what he wants us to be mindful of, is to do that, our ordinary life, and to place it before him as an offering. Where do you want me to go, Lord? 
Who do you want me to run into today? Who do you want me to talk to? Who can I be a blessing to? How can I show Jesus? How can my light show up in dark places? And so he says, this is what I want you to do. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Embracing. That means owning it, acknowledging it, holding it on dear, to cling to it. He says that's the best thing. That's the best thing that we can do for him. How many know it's not a lot of things that we can do for God, but he says that's the best thing that we can do for him. He says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit right that you fit into it without even thinking. He says, instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. The will of God will become revealed on the inside, and it'll change, as Creflo talks about your want to, and it'll cause you to be more mindful of wanting to do his will versus trying to get him to bless your will, trying to get him to bless what you want to do, to bless your plan, your program. Oh, Lord, I just want to be with this person. Oh, I want to be in a relationship with this person. Oh, God, I see them as my person. Lord, whatever you want to do, is this the person that you have for my life? Is this person going to help me discover your will? And we can do God's will together. And we can flow together. And we can be a blessing together. And so he says, you'll be changed from the inside out. And he says, readily recognize what he wants from you. And quickly respond to it. So he says, don't take a whole lot of time, you know, some people wait, you know, decades. Well, you know, when I get 99, I'm going to do God's will. No. Recognize it now. Understand it now. It's never too early. It's never too late. The Old Testament talks about how there was a 10-year king who was anointed and was able to do God's will. A 10-year-old boy named Joash, who decided early on, I'm going to do God's will. It's believed that David was a teenager when he was out there uh, with the lion and the bear and fighting Goliath. I'm telling you, readily recognize it. Teach it to your children. Teach it to your grandchildren. Do it early. Don't wait until later, and they got to go through all these bumps and humps and scrapes and scars. I'm telling you, he says, recognize what he wants from us. How many of you know I want to recognize now, every day, and quickly respond to it? So when he shows you something, when you know it's him, quickly do it. It's kind of like Mary. I like the fact that you know, when they were at the wedding and they had run out of wine and they didn't quite know what to do and Jesus hadn't started his earthly ministry yet and uh, it was a question whether or not it was even the will of God for this thing to take place or, you know, just trying to figure out what to do next. But I like what Mary said. She says, whatever he tells you to do, what? Do it. Quickly do it. In fact, Jesus said, woman, my time hasn't come. But immediately things were thrust to the forefront. And Jesus began to work miracles. And Jesus began to do the supernatural. And I'm telling you, there's something about quickly obeying, quickly responding, immediately shifting and then as a result, you begin to see the will of God for your life. And sometimes it's just a pivot. You know, in basketball, they pivot. 
And, you know, uh, it's not like a big move, but it's very strategic in the results. And in many instances in our life, we just need to make a pivot and get off what wasn't working in the first place, what we were trying to get God to bless, what we thought was God, pivot. Just make the quick adjustment, pivot. You know, when we were dealing with this uh, pandemic and in March of 2020, and we didn't know what was going on, schools were shutting down, events were shutting down, everything was just shutting down. Kids were going home. Everybody was trying to figure out what is all this about. And we were on the cusp of our conference. And the Lord just said, pivot. And we went from this physical in-person meeting that we had been planning for over a year to a digital virtual meeting. And, you know, it was just a pivot. I told our team, we're going to pivot. We're not going to make this a big thing. We're not going to. We're just going to trust God. God said, shift over and make it all digital. Go from in-person to digital. Pivot. And that's what we've got to do in these last days. You know, we, some of us, you know, are still trying to wrap our brain around this new normal. And we've got to trust God to understand, okay, Lord, what's next? How do you want me to do this thing that you're calling me to do? How do I need to do this business now? How do I need to deal with this child now? How am I going to get to this place where you're calling me to be? Make that pivot and get off of what it was before the pandemic. You know, we're trying to make it like it was. No, it's not coming back. It's not going to happen. We've got to move forward. Find God's will. Spend time with him. Let him speak to you on now what to do concerning the business. Now what to do concerning this relationship. What he wants us to do. Firmly grasping. Let him change you from the inside out. How many know he's got answers for everything? Everything. Before we ask, he's already answered. And so we got to get those answers. We've got to get the solutions. We've got to understand and know what it is without any shadow of a doubt. And just jump on out there and trust God. Quickly respond. Quickly obey. Quickly do what he's telling you to do. Amen. I don't want to drag and drug and be. No. Let's move forward and discovering it, finding it, operating in it, and then as a result, we'll begin to see things in a powerful way. Amen? Amen. Now, let's look at this scripture here over in Psalms. I don't know if you have this in the Passion Translation, but... I want us to look at Psalms 139, verse 14 through 17. Psalms 139, if you can. Uh, The Passion TPT translation. I'm going to give them a second to find that. Glory be to God. Now... The reason God's will does not automatically come to pass in our lives is because we have a part to play. God won't force his will for your life to come to pass. He won't force it. We have to make up in our mind that we will never have the degree of success that we could have in this life until we first Find God's will. This reminds me of Brother John and Sister Deborah Carr. I met, I don't know how I met them. I just was in awe of their anointing to minister to children decades ago. 
And at that time, I think they were doing stitches and some outreach things and reached out to them and realized that, you know, there weren't a whole lot of people of color in ministering to children and doing inner city type missions. At that time, I think they were going into the communities and picking up children and taking them to a place to minister them and taking the trailer out to the communities and the neighborhoods and so forth. And I was just so enamored with their commitment and the anointing to minister to children. How many of you know that is an anointing? Some of y'all show up in the nursery for five minutes. You ready to go. <laughs> you realize real quickly this is not my grace. This is not my anointing. But there's something about the anointing that becomes evident when you begin to step into the will of God and the talents begin to flourish and the graces and the giftings just begin to flourish. And I saw this anointing for just patience and fun. Because some of us, we, church wasn't fun. It's like, when is this going to be over? But I'm telling you, John and Deborah Carr, they make children's church, kids' ministry such a fun place. These kids can't wait to get around. And so that is being in the will of God. That is knowing the will of God. And so we know that it takes a deliberate effort takes sacrifice. I think they were at the time in California, and uh, I reached out to them and invited them to come down and didn't know them. They didn't know me. They came, and uh, I just saw the anointing on them, saw the anointing upon the service times with the children. I saw how the kids just lit up, how they were excited about everything that was going on, and I'm telling you, the rest just became historical. And uh, even as they were going back in retirement, I called them again and said, can you come? And thank the Lord, they were willing to come and just be a blessing. And I get excited about the fact that the seed of God's word is being planted on the inside of our little ones. How many of you know our future is going to be all right? Our future is going to be great when we begin to make room and they allow this word to become planted on good ground. And, you know, they approach us as if they, you don't know who these kids are, who God is going to use. It might be the next, you know, T.D. Jakes, the next Creflo Dollar, the next Joe. You know, it's just like every person has a unique assignment, a unique calling. So you have to find to follow and fulfill the will of God. Not be thoughtless, not be careless, not be vague or foolish, but firmly grasping, firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is for your life. Amen. It's enough for me to know what God has called me to do, but I want you to know what he's called you to do. Know where he wants you to serve. Know where he wants you to be. Know where he wants you to do. And he will speak to your heart. Because... He is our shepherd, and we are his sheep. And so what? We hear his voice. Somebody say, I hear, his voice. I hear his voice. And so you can't let circumstances move and control you because a lot of times being in the will of God, you're going to have obstacles, circumstances, trials, tests, tribulations, but you can't let those things 
move you outside of God's will for your life. You may say, well, you know, I had a miscarriage. Well, I had a divorce. I had someone to go home to be with the Lord. True, those are potentially devastating, uh, debilitating situations, but you can't cause or allow that to cause you to get outside of God's will for your life. I don't make light of those things, but a lot of times we can't pivot back to where we're supposed to be, and then our life is going totally outside of God's plan because we don't know how to make the adjustment. And so many people think that whatever God's will is comes to pass. Whatever, you know, que sera, sera, whatever will be, what will be. No, that's not how it works. He is sovereign, but we have to do our part. And things don't just happen. You know, everything that happens in your life is not God's will. So we have to understand that. There is a devil loose. There is a devil loose. And so we have to make the decisions that we are going to do his purpose. And we're going to acknowledge the gifts and the abilities that he gives us to accomplish his purpose. So he says here that you formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. He says, you did that, God. He did that. It just amazes me that he would know our insides, our outsides, our innermost being. God did that. He knows all there is to know about us. And you wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. How thoroughly he knows us. And so if he knows us inside and out, how many of you know there is that will that we want to know inside and out. We want to know that we're in it. We want to know that we're confident of doing what it is that he's called us to do from the foundations of the world. Now, look at this over in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Romans 8, verse 6. Now, hold on for a second. Go back to verse 14. Let's look at verse 15 in the uh, Passion Translation. I didn't realize I didn't read all of that. Verse 15. <clears throat> and then we'll come back to Romans chapter 8, verse 6. And Second Peter 3 and 9, if time doesn't run out on us. You even formed, this is so good, you even formed every bone in my body. When you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully, shaping me from nothing to something. Shaping me from nothing to something. Somebody say, I am something. You are something. Glory be to God. Don't let anybody tell you you are nothing. No, by the word of God, I am something. I am who God says I am. I can be what God says I can be. I can do what God says I can do. And I can know his will for my life. He says, you even... Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to the next verse here. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. 
think of that. He saw it. Who he created you to be. Before you even knew who you were, God saw it from the foundations of the world. My God. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. Woo. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Let's just lift up our hands. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My God. One of the reasons that some people aren't satisfied with getting up and going to work, coming home, watching television, their ordinary life, going to bed, getting up, doing the whole thing all over again is because they aren't doing what God called them to do. You need to know this morning that you are on a path that is making a difference. That you are on a path that's changing lives, that changes the lives of other people. And so he says, look over in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. And um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 is where we'll just have to figure out a place to stop. Before you were even born, God had already written down what your life is supposed to be. You may think you made it yourself, but you can't bring out what God didn't put in. A lot of times we're trying to put a circle in a square, and it just does not fit. And you can spend all of your life meandering through life, asking the Lord, Why, Lord? What am I missing? He says, I didn't tell you to do that. I remember I went all the way over to Paris one time to minister. I was just glad to be invited, glad to be somewhere. I got over there. The whole service was about to start. Lo and behold, the whole service ended. Thought I was supposed to be speaking. And it was a bunch of confusion with the invitation and who was supposed to speak and who wasn't. And I cried out to the Lord, Lord, <laughs> what mean is this? <laughs> you know what he said? I didn't tell you to go over there. <laughs> you went over there on your own. I said, well, let me just get my little happy self <laughs> back home. And so we just got to get sick of being, you know, caught up in what we want to do. You got to let it die. Let it go. We think that all these things validate us. We think these things confirm us. We think these things, you know, will give us our identity. But we've got to find that firm foundation and settle in it, be secure in it. He says in uh, Romans 8, verse 6, it's a couple of translations here. I don't know uh, if it's the Amplified, but the King James says, for to be carnally minded is what? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He says in the Amplified, now the mind of the flesh. See, I was just being fleshy. And when we don't think in line with what God has planned it's for our life and we're trying to go out here and make stuff happen and make God bless it, it's the mind of the flesh, he says, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. He says it's death. 
You know, sometimes you can get outside of the will of God, and it can be very tragic. It can be life-altering. So we don't want to play with being outside of God's will. I tell my kids that, yeah, you know, do what the Lord says. They're like, Mama, I'm, I'm getting my testimony. Well, uh, <laughs> God bless you. He says, uh, the mind of the flesh is death, death that comprises all miseries arising from sin, both here and thereafter, here and hereafter. So, you know, there is physical death, but there's also spiritual death. And so sometimes it may not be the physical death that occurs as a result of having a, a mind that is carnal, a mind that's not renewed, a mind that is not cognizant of the will of God, but it's being cut off and separated from hearing from God, unable to recognize his voice, unable to perceive uh, the Holy Spirit. And so he says, this is what happens with a carnal mind. He says, sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh. Oh, let me go back. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul, peace both now and forever. Now, I want us to be mindful of this very important point, is that the will of God has to be pursued. And we can find this over in, what did I say, Second Peter? Turn there with me, and let's look at this. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. God will always cause you to do something beyond your natural ability, forcing you to rely on him. He will always call you to do something that is beyond your natural ability. If you only do what you feel you are naturally equipped to do, what you're capable of doing in your own strength and ability, then you will be tempted to give yourself the credit for success. In fact, you're simply doing what comes naturally to you. Then you probably haven't found God's will for your life. God's intention is not that you do whatever you want with your life as much as your heart has to be pure and everything will be all right. Only with effort and time will you see God's will for your life come to pass. You have to make a decision to pursue God's will. You will never have another today. You have to spend every day moving in the direction that God wants your life to go. You have a sphere of influence, people in your life, that God brings into your life, that you may never receive the full anointing that God has for them unless that potential that God places on the inside of you is able to be dispersed. You'll be happier and a much greater blessing once you find your purpose and start heading in that direction. And so sometimes people think that, you know, because God wants something to happen that you know, uh, it automatically comes to pass, but it's contingent and it is subject to people's decisions. He will not force it. He will not usurp our will and our authority. He made us free will, free moral agents, and he will honor the decisions that we make. If we choose not to do his will, if we choose not to fulfill his will, you may say, well, you know, hey, I'm just good being saved. Okay, but there is a will. There is a plan beyond just, you know, getting saved. As they used to say, getting fire insurance, just, you know, I'm just trying to get away from hell. That's all. I, I just want to escape hell. I just want to do what I want to do, but I don't want to go to hell when I die. But look at what he says here. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and some men count slackness, but is long 
suffering to usward. Isn't that good? Long suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it is God's will that everybody be saved. But how many of you know? Everybody don't want to be saved. Some people made up in their mind, I'm going to be an atheist. I'm going to be agnostic. I'm going to think that it's the universe. I'm going to, you know, think it's this. I'm going to think it's that. No. So we have to acknowledge that it is a person's decision, their deliberate quality of decision that they have to choose, like in each and every one of us have to choose in order to experience God's will, because his will is that none perish, but that all would enjoy life. But we have to be intentional, and we have to pursue it. And once we pursue it, I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed this morning?